Yeah. So how are you guys enjoying the con so far? Good. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Good, great. Uh, guys, we're here with the Devil May Cry crew, plus the awesome Johnny and Bosch from the Power Rangers. Right. My more Power Rangers. Thank you guys for coming. Um, uh, and Dan South with the Quantum Ranger. Ooh, the Quantum Ranger, Ranger. Yeah. Ruben Lane is stunts from Power Rangers. <laughs> and I'm just Brian. Yeah, he's Brian, Brian. not from Power Rangers. You gotta tie in all the Power Rangers. Yes. Do it. Don't forget, Ruben Langdon did... Yeah. yeah. Psychobot! There you go. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I know that a lot of uh, this... I'm gonna first talk about Devil May Cry. Uh, first Perfect. Off, because this is Thank very story-intensive, and I'd like to... It's for everyone. These are all of you very uh, talented and successful voice actors, in my, in my opinion. And so you've worked a lot with story. How do you implement your voices in terms of direction when it comes to story and, and sort of developing that story within yourselves and portraying that on the screen? There's a person on the other side of the booth that tells you how to say it. Right. <laughs> Just doing line that, Yeah, that works. Before, in, before the process of two, like in terms of the interview process, or I should say line read process, before you can get the job, do you know a lot about the stories that you're going to be doing so that you know kind of the... There's a guy on set, he's named the director, and right. he tells you what the story is. He tells you what to do. Yeah. He tells you what to do. And before that, that usually you're given the script, and then right. you get to read the script, and then, uh, you know, you get to get an idea of what the character's about. And, um, it depends on what stage, you know. If, yeah. Like, when you audition, you get a brief description. You might have a picture of the character, um, and then you just develop it from there. Like, what's the age? And so, I mean... I think for all of it, none of us altered our voice. Yeah. Well, you might have altered it a little bit, and I just, had to adjust because like there's like our range is kind of the same, yeah. and so he's supposed to be a little older. I'm supposed to sound a little younger in this latest one, so we had to do a little bit of that separation, but not too much. I mean, yeah, still and, in our and the great range. thing about the franchise is it's already established. They've already got all the character designs, and, and even though they're different every time, they they do have. Uh, you know, when we get into it, by the time we get into our motion capture scenes, they have a pretty good idea of what those characters are going to look like. Um, oh yeah, it's pasted all over the walls. It's pasted, Plus, yeah. and then when you walk out on the stage or on the floor, you can see it on the screen. And your skin just yeah. You know, Absolutely. as soon as you walk across that line, that threshold. And plus, it being five, on, we had the. The previous uh, shows that we or games that we worked on. Yeah, to, super familiar with. Draw. By the time you're doing the the fifth installment of a franchise, you you, you already know the character. Right. You can actually walk on, and the director will say, "I'd like to he, see something like this," and you can have some. He might have a different. Yeah. Story. yeah. Uh, well, different story. Yeah. for they wouldn't even tell me what game it was, like in the second and third round of the audition, and then only after coming in and signing the contracts and signing all the NDAs did they tell me the actual game. And then it was playing catch up to, because you know obviously I knew it, but only from three and four, and so going back and reading about that. But then also with the introduction of a whole new character, a new story, and then literally in the first table read that we did, um, that was kind of where the story was revealed. It wasn't like oh, and here's a breakdown of everything, so you know what's coming and what's happening. So that was another layer of kind Which of developing that. Which is usually the process, too. Yeah. and especially with video games, they're not forthcoming with the script. Actually, didn't they call it S and G or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and that's that's a little bit of a problem because it makes it very difficult to prepare uh, as a character. Um, one of the perks on this for him was he had us to yeah. to talk to about it and to ask questions. And then the other the other cool thing about this is that there's a Japanese translation that we have to do. Mm -hmm. It's translated it, uh, uh, where an English translation translation from the Japanese original script that's written. And that actually gives us time. Yeah, and especially because we have to change around, like, you know, uh, there's, at least, I'm sure it was the same when you guys did the other ones as well, but when we first got the script, there was a lot of changes to be made and a lot of playing with the script and the lines to make it a little bit more us, but also a little, in some cases, just more coherent, because there's things that don't directly translate, and so you'd be reading lines that it's like, I'm not sure if this is what you mean to say, but I get kind of the gist, so that adds another layer of feeling more personal about the story because when you've changed a line or when you've worked with the other characters or the director or the writer to make it more understandable for you, it also creates this sense of like, okay, now I feel like this character is actually something that I'm helping to create on the page before I even take it, you know. When I was, did, when I was doing uh, Killzone, I was working with Ray Winstone and Malcolm McDowell. These are, you know, 
actors with tremendous experience and um, uh, an impressive resume. Um, and they were giving him 15 pages of dialogue on the spot. And I was watching those guys flounder because it, you just can't do that. You know, to do the work well, you need time to prep for it. It doesn't happen spontaneously. And I had at that time been used to it from the video game world. That was kind of how it was operating because they're all trying to keep their product projects top secret. But I had noticed that it had dumbed down my performance. My performance was just very sort of straightforward off the cuff all the time because I was used to working that fast. And watching them was eye-opening because they were complaining about it, they had a problem with it, they had a hard time with it. And I realized, hey man, we, this stuff takes time. And on shows like this, when they do give us Typically, uh, you know, a lot of Japanese productions I've worked in on, and we had a very special, uh, relaxed environment, and they gave us a lot of time to work on the script on set, which typically does not happen in a, in a Japanese video game type situation. You're sort of given your lines, the translation's already happened, and you're trying to figure it out, and you're like, what the heck and is you know, going on here? That's that has to do with the quality of what you guys are seeing and what you guys are enjoying. I'm watching him talk to the director. I'm, when I say him, I mean I'm pointing to Brian. I'm watching Brian have long conversations with the director about the character and the craft. And that's because Ruben had set that up from the beginning and established that as a as a protocol with Capcom. Um, understanding how films need to work and how to translate that, what we love about films and what makes films so good, into the gaming cinematics. So Ruben is also very responsible for the quality well, of what we see. Well, it's, 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 it's Yuji and it's also Itsuno san they, they... No, 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 it's Ruben. <laughs> no, I, it's, well, it's that. It's talking to people who actually also want to, or are open to that. Because I've had conversations with other Capcom uh, staff who, they don't, they just don't want yeah. to, they're like, no, it's got to be this way, and we don't have time, and just do it. And you're okay, well then, then it's UG, and it's... It's, it's the combination, it's the combination. It's, it's having... There, there was a lot of that, uh, which, you know, going into it, we, we knew when we were looking at the script. I knew when I read the script, and I was like, that's not... Yeah, the, the, during the table read, we were like, yes. table read, we did an English, uh, the first English version without the Japanese. Before we in the states, before we went to Japan, uh, and had and got access to Yuji and the other uh, uh, producers and and whatnot. So, yeah, we were all just kind of like, "What's going on here? This is kind of strange." Okay, we'll just figure it out when we get there. You know, yeah, and we and it must have been odd for you to come in and see us like, change and everything. So. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely strange well, at first right. to see you guys, like, yeah, that's not literally work. just like going through the script like no no yeah, let's like, change this but it was also <laughs> weird to like yeah. come in and you know with all this secrecy right. that they had about it and how serious they take it like <laughs> they lay it on the line straight up front like if you break contract this is what happens but it was also weird to come in and see a full script where it was it had blatant obvious like what the hell is that like what what are these lines you know like it was the first time i've kind of seen you know, like all this money and all this time and secrecy being spent and we're all here for the table reading, you're reading through it and it's like, not just guys changing lines because we're actors and we're going to do what we want, no, like because they need to be changed and so that was an interesting experience to see, you know. Yeah, I kept looking over and like, oh, he must, you know, think that we're these divas. They're, it's, you know, and then we're very uh, open to that. Yeah. They, they, they wanted to talk through it and be like, okay, well, why, why are we making this change? Well, they also seemed like, from the outside perspective coming in, it seemed very much like they wanted the three of you to put your stamp on it. They, like, it wasn't just like, yes, you have permission to do it, but also, like, you know these characters as well as anyone, and so we want them to have that, you know, Johnny Nero stamp, you know, that Ruben Dante stamp. Progressive, forward thinking producers. And that's that's always Rare. it's always hard to get the right combination of creatives together. You know, sometimes producers want to just uh, put you in a box and, and make you do their algorithm. And I, but these guys are creative and you know, they also are that's the reason why the, the game is so fun for people. I've heard people uh, talk about kind of how the difference between like restrictions and sort of a freestyle flow of, of not just anime but acting in general. Uh, do you guys have a, a preference in terms of the amount of freedom that one gets, or is it depending on the project? 
preference in terms of how much freedom he gets versus me? Or just generally how much freedom that you would want out of I, I want uh, more freedom. For instance, uh, Tara Sands, who was just here, um, referenced her liking restrictions more than perfect abject freedom. And, I and think she's talking about having a director with some direction and vision. Yes, I exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because when yeah. you get on a set and you have a director that doesn't tell you to do anything, mm -hmm. you can be lost in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And while as an actor that's wonderful to do whatever yes. you want, you still need to know that you're just gonna you're just gonna vomit a lot of creativity. Right. You still need to know how to shape that and what direction to go in, to keep track of your overall. Yeah. You, there's only so much you can do and actually be in the moment. And even even the most seasoned actors, I feel like, will tell you, and I feel this way as well. If you are given that just like go attitude, there are those moments where it's like you're second guessing yourself just because there is no direction. It's like, it's not, am I making the right choice? Yeah. It's just like, am what I am doing, is that good at all? Are we doing the right thing? You know, it's like my interpretation of just anything could be completely wrong for the scene, could be, you know, great in this moment, but not match up at all with what's been going on in the rest of filming. So it definitely there's a, helps to have vision. There's, there's a fine line, and, but here's a good example of, of what the difference between the two is. I come up, he has a line, and I tell him exactly how I want the words inflexed, and how I want him to pronounce the words, and where I want him to punch the meaning of the words. That's getting too, <laughs> that, yeah, that's getting too micromanaging as a director, and that's not enough freedom. You need some freedom as the actor to interpret and respond. Versus, I like that. I like which direction you went with that. What if we play with this instead? And then you're like, you're open to it. Do now, as an actor, when I work, I like to just do whatever they ask, um, unless I have a really strong opinion about something, then I'll converse with them. When they brought you on to be your talent, so a director that's giving you line reads and stuff, it's like, I'm never going to be able to do it the way you can do it because I'm not you, and you hired me to be me, or at least to be the creator that I am. So, like, that's another thing I think you know helps a lot when they know how to be like, I want to use what you bring to it. He Thank you guys. Uh, <laughs> sorry to cut you off, but the panel is waiting outside. I can say it's a great discussion. We could continue more. But I'm going to step up for our guests right now. Thank you. <laughs>